Welcome to the video on IP version 4 header. Let us now look at the IP version 4 header. This is the header which is used by the IP layer. In the if you look into it carefully, then uh, the header is of uh, 20 bytes to 60 bytes. Uh, this 20 bytes, you no, know, uh, it's basically a broken up into 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 rows, right? In the first row, if you see, and each of, this four, each of these rows, you know, is of 4 bytes each. So, 32 bits is equal to 4 bytes and 4 into 5 such rows is equal to 20 bytes. So, this is going to be present in every packet, right? So, if you look into it, there is a version uh, field of 4 bit, there is header length of 4 bit, then there is type of service which is of 8 bits, then total length is of 16 bits. In the second row, identification is of 16 bits. Uh, this flags, you no, know, there are three flags, uh, one is 0 by default, uh, second uh, field is uh, do not fragment df flag and more fragment. So, each of these are 1 bit each and the fragmentation offset is of 13 bit. In the third row, time to live is of 8 bit, protocol is of 8 bit, header checksum is of 16 bit, source IP is of 32 bit and destination IP is of 32 bit. Options fields range from 0 to 40 bytes. That is why you know the 20 byte uh, uh, header which is going to be present in every packet, but no, there are there is an option field which is which is optional, but if it is present then it can range from 0 to 40 bytes, right. So, in total there would be uh, uh, 20 to 60 bytes and the uh, the, the total uh, header plus data in IP version 4 can go up to uh, 2 to the power 16 data which is 665536, right. So, minimum header length is what is 20 bytes and options can vary from 0 to 40 bytes. So, minimum is 20 and maximum it can go is 60. So, uh, now in the header length field, uh, if you see uh, maximum it is of 4 bit, right. We will see one by one each of these fields. So, if the header length field uh, that is a 4 bit, so uh, it can go maximum up to 15 that is 1111. So, maximum header length is equal to uh, we know that it is 60 bytes, right. So, 60 divided by 15 is equal to 4, right. So, 4 is the scaling factor. So, if header length is equal to 20 bytes, so divide it by 4 and you get 5. So, put this 5 in the header length field. So, in that way, you know the value of header length field will be, uh, whatever the value is that it will be multiplied by 4 to get the actual header length value. So, if header length is 32, then what will happen is 32 divided by 4 is equal to 8. So, value of 8 will be placed inside the header length field 1000. So, now if header length field is 10, then what is the actual header length? Uh, if header length field is 10, what is the actual header length? It is 10 into 4 is 40 bytes. So, range is 20 to 60 bytes. So, that is nothing but 5 dash 15. 5 is the minimum value and 15 is the maximum value. And now, let us say given to you some situation like 30 is the value. Whether it is possible to have the header length of 30? Uh, answer to this is no because 30 uh, we need to in that case we need to add two more bytes uh, which is nothing but the dummy bytes or the we can even say it is padding, padding with zeros. So, if header length is not in multiples of 4, padding would be done to make it multiple of 4. So, in worst case how many bytes would be uh, padded? So, maximum would be uh, 3 bytes. Now, let us say if 21 is there, then 21 plus 3 equal to 24. So, in that way uh, the header length can go up to uh, uh, 20 to 60, but then uh, depending upon the padding requirement, it will be padded with either 1 or 2 or 3 maximum. Then next is let us say version, version is of 4 bit, so various versions of IP is there. So, version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4, currently uh, we are using version 4. So, different functions and uh, uh, version 4 parsers are there. Uh, so, the value in that will be 0, 1, double 0, right, 4 bits with the value is 0, 1, double 0, which is 4. So, version 5 is, uh, came into existence, but it was discarded uh, experimentally, it was not successful. 
and uh, in the future no uh, uh, version 6 is uh, going to play the role uh, version 6 different uh, functions would be there with the version 6 parser so value in that case uh, with the ip header of version 6 would be what 0110 next is uh, identification field we'll look into the service and type of total length and other things uh, total length is 16 that is 2 to the power 16 uh, 0 to 2 to the power 16 minus 1 that is nothing but 65536 right uh, identification is of 16 bits we use identification number uh, in order to number every datagram that is going uh, out of the host right so it is going to be very much useful when we do fragmentation when we do fragmentation every fragment is going to get the same identification number and uh, when we look into the flags uh, i said earlier zero is not used the first bit is zero that is not used df do not fragment and more fragment uh, uh, mf is more fragment so other fragments are following or not that could be known by the more fragment field and uh, if you look into the do not fragment field then uh, what we are doing is uh, we are actually uh, sending uh, uh, we are actually uh, sending the more fragment fields uh, we are setting the more fragment flag uh, yes if you see uh, in this uh, uh, that there is an mtu uh, there is a network uh, with the mtu of uh, uh, 1000 and uh, uh, in between the another network uh, there is uh, there is a router which is connected and uh, uh, there is an mtu of 100 100 so what will happen is uh, on one side we are having a network of uh, mtu with 1000 and the other side we are having a network of mtu of 100 so in between there is a router which is going to check whether the packet of this size can be passed on to the other network or not so in that case no this df uh, flag is going to be useful to us so whether the fragmentation is required or not or whether so if it is the last uh, let's say in the la if it is the last uh, fragment uh, then no i think uh, uh, what we should do is we can we uh, we can say that do not fragment flag is set uh, uh, maybe uh, that even could be used let's say let's say uh, df flag is set to one initially in that case what is going to happen is that even though uh, uh, the packet is there which needs uh, to be broken up into so let's say uh, 10 uh, uh, packets right uh, 10 fragments mm, but then this df flag is set to one which is that do not fragments right so in that case what is going to happen is that packet will be discarded because the other underlying network is of lesser in size so what it will do is router will discard the datagram and will send the icmp packet internet control message protocol packet to the source right so in this way uh, it is going to discard it and uh, uh, why this is required is because you no know, we want that the uh, entire datagram should be sent and not it should not be sent into the pieces right so that is the requirement of the atomicity if at all if it is there then uh, there is a field called fragmentation offset this fragmentation offset is nothing but we are having uh, the fragment and uh, fragment and then these fragments needs to be numbered so number of data bytes already of this particular fragment no in this particular datagram we need to identify right so uh, where is it present so in in, in what way you no know, the things would be there in that way no fragmentation offset we'll come to this fragmentation offset in detail uh, once we cover this header field so let us look into the ttl field uh, time to leave field is the, the concept which is used in the routers right and uh, there is a network let's say the default case, default interface is connected to a nid is all zero network id is all zero subnet mask is all zeros and the interface is a so there is a default router which is connected every every routing table will be having this uh, default router connected to it right so with one entry at least would be there so let's see which uh, which problem might lead to uh, with uh, in this ttl so let's say there are three routers which are there and uh, these, these three routers no uh, are connected in this way so let's say the ttl field is equal to 8 and uh, mm, this uh, the default you know, router path is uh, uh, sending the route uh, the packet to one router the default path uh, you no know, the down arrow uh, is sending to this router and the uh, lower router and the other uh, the default path of this uh, lower router is again setting the cycle uh, which is giving the uh, default path to the first router so in this case what is happening is there is a cycle which is getting formed and uh, this uh, 
no problem no the problem of uh, infinite loop is uh, possible with such type of mechanism so no router is going to discard it uh, i mean what is going to happen is uh, there will be a continuous uh, flow uh, into the uh, packets uh, in, into this uh, routers and this is going to create a problem right so all the buffers will be full and ultimately what is going to happen is your entire bandwidth your buffer and your processing time is going to be wasted right so thousands of packets will be inside the loop and uh, hence what will happen is uh, the entire disaster will be there so everything will be getting choked up and you will not be in a position to take it further so ttl field uh, you know is going to play a very important role so every packet is going to take few number of hops that is number of packets which are going to jump the routers right so in this case let's say if there is uh, in the in the previous case itself no if there is let's say the ttl value is 8 so what it will do is it will it is whenever it is the packet uh, uh, the value of ttl will be set by the host initially and then a host will never decrement it but the router that every router no it is going to uh, decrement the value right and then finally the destination also will be decrementing the value of the ttl so now what is going to happen is let's say ttl is equal to 8 was there in the initial packet and then it is made available to the router 1 which is now decremented to 7 this is then passed to the another router which makes it 6 then it goes that the down 6 uh, becomes 5 again to the top 5 becomes 4 uh, 4 becomes 3 3 becomes 2 2 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 right so in this way at 0 you know the packet has to be discarded so uh, what is going to happen here is you no know, uh, ttl field every packet is going to take few number of hops right and uh, in order to count the number of hops we are going to use uh, this ttl field is useful so ttl when ttl value is equal to 0 packet has uh, taken the maximum number of hops and, and that and therefore the packet has to be discarded so in general you no know, what is going to be there is uh, the ttl field uh, value will be set uh, to some values like 8 16 32 uh, and so on previously it was 8 and nowadays it is 16 so you can not uh, uh, i mean you are not going to set it your software is going to set it uh, by itself right so if the destination receives now there are two cases if the destination receives the packet and if the ttl is equal to 0 it is going to accept it and not discard it right or any um, zero or any positive number no it is going to accept it but at the router if the value is greater than 0 ttl i mean 0 ttl Uh, is required no uh, otherwise what is hap- going to happen is it will be discarded right so pa- at, at the intermediate level if the, uh, at, in the at the intermediate level no that is nothing but a router so router if the value becomes equal to 0 it is going to be discarded so it has to always maintain the value greater than 0 if the destination uh, pack, destination is reached and if the value of ttl becomes 0 then it will be accepted but not rejected right so any device which is having network layer and destination is going to decrement the ttl understand this and uh, in this way you know the uh, ttl field is going to be useful to us right now there are various uh, 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 protocols which are going to be there and each of these protocols are actually numbered so this field indicates what is the type of protocol and uh, which is present inside this uh, ip datagram so we'll look into this uh, in a different way right okay then so if you look into the uh, uh, protocols uh, there are there are icmp igmp tcp udp uh, ospf and other protocols right so every protocol is internally ha- going to have some numbers right and uh, mostly what is going to happen is uh, the field indicates what is the type of protocol which is present inside this ip datagram most mostly what will be there it will be tcp and it is an 8 bit field so buffers Uh, at router maybe no at at times may become full and resulting into what resulting into some uh, no some packets will be discarded so but before the packets gets discarded it is better to see what kind of packet is present inside the ip datagram so even if you discard it sender is going to send it again and not postpone it. i mean don't i mean what is required is don't postpone it now because anyway no if uh, if it's of high priority then no those packets will be resent and will be anyway requiring it a little later so t- tcp is a reliable protocol and uh, if it is tcp then don't simply discard it uh, see the buffer and uh, remove uh, if possible icmp igmp or udp uh, uh, udp packets 
so router uh, will decide you know, which packet to discard so normally what happens is uh, the list priority which is icmp you know has to be discarded icmp igmp udp and then the highest priority packet tcp maybe uh, if required no that that packet anyway has to be the incoming packet is of high i am um, is of very much important than the lower the, the packet which is already inside the buffer is not required then you can remove that and uh, similar to ph replacement algorithms which we have seen in the operating system right uh, now uh, we will look into the other field which is checksum okay before we look uh, into the checksum let us see uh, some of the examples uh, related to the ip header and ip version 4 packet has arrived uh, with the first 8 bits as shown uh, here the receiver discards the packet y so the solution for this is there is an error in the packet why because the le the four leftmost bits 0 1 double 0 shows the version which is correct but the next four bit 0 0 1 0 shows an invalid header length which is 2 into 4 is equal to 8 and minimum we require is 20 right so the minimum number of bytes in the header must be 20 so packet has been corrupted in the transmission that is you know, that is the reason why the packet has to be discarded right let us take some other example in uh, in an ip version 4 packet the length of uh, header length is 1000 in binary how many bytes of options are being carried by this packet uh, so uh, look into it uh, the header length value is 8 right which means the total number of bytes in the header are what 8 into 4 is equal to 32 bytes right the first 20 bytes are the base header that which is uh, going to be fixed the next 12 bytes are the options so by that now we can come to know that there are 12 options uh, bytes which are there uh, let us take another example in an ip version 4 packet the header length is 5 and the value of the total length field is 0x0028 which is nothing but i think 40 uh, uh, 32 16 to the 32 plus 8 is 40 yes 40 how many bytes of data are being carried by this packet okay so now header length value is 5 so 5 into 4 is 20 so 20 is the header and assuming that there is no option because that is not specified uh, the total length is uh, 40 so what is the meaning of that is 40 minus the header length which is giving us the 20 bytes of data right then uh, let us see the uh, someone uh, more example uh, in ip version 4 uh, packet has arrived with the first few hexadecimal digits as shown how many hops can this packet travel uh, before being dropped the uh, data belongs to what upper layer protocol so solution to this is uh, i mean to find the time to live field we skip the first eight bytes the time to live field is the ninth byte which is 0, 01 and this means the packet can travel only one hop the protocol field in the next byte uh, 0, 02 which means that the upper layer protocol is igmp so icmp is one and igmp is two so by that now we can come to know which protocol and other things are present inside the uh, 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 inside the packet Right. maximum transfer unit is uh, like MTU uh, maximum length of the data to be encapsulated in a frame so that depends upon the uh, different uh, uh, underlying networks so MTU for some of the networks are given here so understand here if you look into the Ethernet it is 1500 right and uh, uh, mostly you no know, we will look into the 1500 uh, uh, examples you no know. uh, then uh, sometimes you no know, some uh, examples could be given to you for token ring and even for some hyper channel depending upon the questions given to you you need to address uh, uh, or maybe you can do the fragmentation as per the requirement but remember this uh, 1500 is for the ethernet and we have seen this uh, do not fragment and more fragments uh, flags and fragmentation example we'll see uh, in a different way uh, we'll uh, come to that little later yes uh, coming to the header checksum part uh, and initially uh, what is going to be there is that the uh, checksum field will be equal to 0 and uh, and then no uh, uh, we will calculate the checksum we know what how to calculate the checksum and then finally the calculated checksum will be placed in the checksum field in the header checksum field but understand no while the packet is moving from one location to the other no uh, uh, there will be uh, some changes uh, in the packet and uh, fields that might change in the journey of the packet now if you see here fragmentation offset uh, more fragments ttl uh, these are the things which are likely to change fields which are likely to change when fragmentation is taking place right 
and uh, the other fields which can change during the journey of the packet is options and the header length right and uh, uh, now uh, i will i will take one example for the uh, head uh, checksum and then we'll continue with the remaining part so here uh, no the example of checksum calculation in ipa version 4 this checksum initially is set to zero the yellow color uh, which is you not know, the arrow is there then what we do is normally we break up into 16 uh, bits and then do the uh, the calculate the sum for that and check some the complement of that we calculate and we put up this a b b one no which is the the one shown in the red one red color uh, and replace it with the uh, in the inside the header so in this in this way we can calculate the uh, checksum in the uh, head uh, in the of the header okay now uh, coming to the uh, various types of ip addresses uh, uh, logical addresses uh, where you know the source ip addresses and destination ip addresses so we know that the fourth row and the fifth row is uh, source ip and destination ip so now uh, we know that you now in any of the ip addresses it is basically divided into network id and the host id so if there is a valid network id i mean network id and a host id then we can say it is a valid ip right it is a valid ip right then uh, if it is a network id and a valid ne network id and host id with all zeros in that case we can say it is a network id right then if it net id is all uh, is a valid net id is there and then host id is all ones we can say it is directed broadcast address then when net id is all ones and uh, host id is also all ones it we can we, what we say is limited broadcast address uh, net id is all ones and host ids are all zero we say it is network mask or subnet mask and so on right and uh, uh, going further uh, when network network id is all zeros and uh, uh, host id is uh, is a, maybe a valid host id then it is saying what it is a host within a network host within a network means what that you no know, let's say there is a network of, uh, which is 100.0.0.0 and within this uh, there are two hosts which are having 100.1.1.2 and 100.1.1 ip addresses so inside the uh, inside the uh, packet now uh, when we specify source address as 0.1.1.1 and destination address is 0.1.1.2 so here what we have done is we have specified network id as 0 and host id is only we have specified so this is what we are talking of uh, network id of zeros and host id is uh, valid host id then next is uh, zero uh, network id and zero host id so the meaning of this is that the ip address uh, is not known so what we can say is i uh, i don't know i don't have the ip address we'll look into the other protocols like uh, boot pa and uh, 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 arp rarp protocols you know, where you know we'll be using this type of ip addresses then there is one more uh, special case uh, which is saying that network id is 127 and the valid host id so it is also belonging to a special address known as loopback address right now now just to look into it in a careful uh, more careful way uh, if uh, source ip is there and destination ip is there both are valid in the first case there is no problem at all but can this be a source ip uh, and uh, the second one uh, network id is only the address which is there can it be a source ip and uh, can it be a destination ip so no both could not be possible right and uh, when we say directed broadcast address directed broadcast address can be a valid uh, destination ip but not the source ip uh, likewise limited broadcast address limited broadcast address is also uh, it's a destination address right so valid destination I, uh, ip is there but not the source ip subnet mask and uh, the the network mask can never be either so source ip or destination ip in the in the packet right then uh, host within a network so host within a network we have seen the example of this it can be a valid source address and it could be a valid destination address so here both the you no know, tick marks are there then uh, 0 dot uh, com 0 comma 0 i mean uh, i don't have any ip address so when uh, uh, when uh, this machine is not having any ip address no it will say it is uh, all zeros and it is then uh, the responsibility of the client server model no where no the the boot p server will provide the appropriate ip address to that particular machine 
so this can be a source valid source ip address but not the destination because destination can never be zero right and uh, 127.0.0 uh, uh, is a valid destination IP address but not the source IP address, right. So, in this way we have specified um, uh, various uh, uh, IP addresses in the which are present inside the uh, in, inside the fourth row and the fifth row uh, of the IP header. Now, we look into the options, no options uh, there are 0 to uh, 40 bytes and uh, this is uh, absolutely optional and all datagram may not require this fields, some datagram may use it. We will uh, look into some of the examples uh, or some, some of the options. So, first is the record root in which you no, know, what we do is we record the entire root information. So, R1 and R2 taking this as a simple example, R1 and R2 uh, will, ha will have an IP address of 4 bytes, right and maximum size of the option is 40 bytes understand the maximum size of the option is 40 bytes out of which no uh, some of the bytes will be reserved for managing this data structures. So, maximum record uh, will be 10, but for uh, type of options no and some other uh, bytes no some, some, bytes, some bytes will be occupied. So, I mean 4 bytes will be occupied. So, maximum 9 IP addresses uh, would be recorded. So, only the ISPs or the network administrators uh, network administrators would be able to uh, use this, I mean to will be allowed to record the root. Users will not be allowed to use this options in case if they use it, your routers is anyway going to discard it, uh, will not be allowing them to take it further. So, this is uh, one record root option. So, what if you look here, what we have done is uh, from the source to the receiver, now what routes, uh, which uh, routers has been uh, travel no all this information will be recorded in the record route okay i will show you in the presentation uh, and the formats of the record route and how the things would be managed so byte by byte i mean 4 4 bytes would be there which will be stored right. you don't have to remember uh, all the formats and other things but yes it remains as a uh, base for you to understand next option is uh, uh, source routing uh, you could specify your own route uh, in the packet, no, in the packet you could specify the route that is uh, the, the packet that you want to, uh, the route that you want to follow, right. So, what we have done here is let us say uh, from the source to destination, from the source to destination there are two possible paths R1, R2, R4 and R1, R3 and R4 then followed by D. So, there are there is a, a source route which is possible, uh, strict source route if you want to specify then you can very clearly say it, it should follow always R1, R2, R4 and then it should reach to the destination. So, uh, maybe you no know, routers can change uh, also you know, in, in the path, right and uh, mm, the destination IP address at, uh, at uh, IP address at every level will also change. So, router will change the destination IP address. Then uh, if I say my destination, I am skipping one of the router and directly making, I am specifying the path in the source routing as R1, R4 and then D. So, I am not specifying R2 or R3, which option should follow, should be followed, I am not specifying it. So, it, I am following do not care, no, which one it follows. So, this is uh, under the category, this falls under the category of loose source routing. So, earlier was a strict source routing and the, 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 uh, the other one is the loose source routing. I mean this is used to check the route is working or not, no, whether uh, the, uh, the, uh, the route which is uh, uh, R2 is router working or not. If you want to check then you can use all such type of things. This option is going to be used by network administration not by the normal users, right. So, the, uh, we have seen some of the some options, one is record route, another is uh, uh, source routing, strict source routing and loose source routing. The other option is the padding. Uh, if the options are not in multiples of uh, 4, now padding is used in the header. So, there could be padding in the beginning, padding in the end also. So, um, both way padding is possible, right. Uh, so, this, these are some of the options which uh, are there. Uh, I will show you the appropriate header for that little once we come, I finish up this, uh, the some of the fields, other fields. So, let us see the, the, uh, the other fields which are present. One is the total length field. I, I told you earlier total length field is of 16 bit and uh, there is one more uh, length uh, which is header length, right. So, header length and total length. So, that by that now you will come to know what is the actual data which the packet is able to carry. So,
So 16 is to the power 16 minus 1, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. This is the maximum size uh, present in, in the IP datagram. So in IP, uh, in packet switching, we, uh, we have seen that you know, the size should not be too small and it, it should not be even too big. Right? So that is why you know, the packet switching was considered to be the, uh, uh, using the pipelining mechanism, you know, it was found to be the best one. Now also we have seen that you know, at the application layer, we, uh, the application layer, it, the message could be of any size and then uh, this any size message needs to be submitted to the transport layer and transport layer then when it is at the transport layer we call it as the segment and then it is pass it is submitted to the network layer where we call it as datagram and uh, then to the data link layer where we call it as frame and then to the physical layer we, where we call it as single protocol data unit if you look into this i told you earlier that the ethernet mtu is 1500 byte right so 1500 byte uh, is as the baseline and uh, header and trailer if you see header and trailer so at the if at the frame level uh, in the ethernet level there is a header and trailer and the bottom is 1500 byte and maximum uh, data that we can carry uh, the, uh, in the as per the ip header is what uh, 16 bits right so 65535 bytes of data could be there so if I, if i say that 65535 if i uh, take it further to the top layer then uh, 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 what is there is uh, there is a payload data which is uh, uh, i mean at the uh, i'm talking of uh, a uh, network layer right so i'm talking of network layer so 20 byte header and the remaining information so it comes up to 65515 and 20 which is 65535 right and when it goes to the segmentation you now it becomes what again 20 byte of tcp header and then the remaining information so 65495 which we call it as segmentation so breaking of data from application layer uh, into parts this the breaking of data from application layer into part is known as segmentation and appropriately so see we have to see that you no know, what is the underlying architecture Archit uh, uh, what is the underlying uh, network and based upon that only you know uh, whether the segmentation would be better or be, maybe we should do the fragmentation in the beginning itself at the segmentation uh, at the transport layer right so in data link layer ethernet maximum size is of 1500 bytes and uh, the network layer maximum size is uh, 65535 so this is uh, 1500 is going to vary as i told you uh, the mtu uh, that is maximum transmittable unit will be different for different types of uh, networks right uh, like maybe it will be different for token ring it will be different for LAN and so on so uh, this 65535 will be broken up into 1500 bytes ethernet LAN, uh, which is known as fragmentation right so this is basically cl uh, clearly a headache on the host doing segmentation and fragmentation so uh, what transport layer will do is it will find out what is the capacity of network layer and capacity of data link layer and will calculate who is the bottleneck and accordingly uh, after identifying who is the bottleneck it will divide the packet in such a way that it will directly go and sit into the data link layer frame without any problem so uh, if i see here if i say here if uh, my 1500 byte of data is supposed to be there then if i at the transport layer if it decides that no uh, 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 what should be the data it should be 1460 plus 20 and then that becomes 1480 1480 plus 20 it becomes 1500 uh, to the 1500 i add header and trailer the data link layer in that way no the transport layer itself will decide that okay if it is ethernet then i can carry uh, my data would be maximum of 1460 so from the application layer what it does is 1460 1460 1460 1460 no uh, uh, is uh, uh, broken up so if transport layer takes this uh, network layer and data link layer considerations then transport layer will do segmentation wisely right then uh, there is the concept of uh, fragmentation uh, we'll look into the fragmentation uh, uh, with uh, uh, with some examples right so in the fragmentation uh, what is basically fragmentation is we divide the packet into smaller packets if required so uh, a, a normally fragmentation uh, no uh, what it will do is it is not done at source uh, at source segmentation is done so uh, so that there is no need of fragmentation so we'll, the system has to make sure that no there should be minimum fragmentation but in case if the router uh, is there in between and that router will see that no the underlying mtu the uh, the 
outgoing MTU is lesser in size, in that case, no, what it will do is it will it is supposed to do the fragmentation. So, where is fragmentation actually done is, uh, let us say assume that uh, this is uh, uh, a situation given to you, MTU on one side is 520 and MTU on the other side is 200 bytes, right. So, MTU of 520 that is how uh, I mean 50, 500 plus 20 is 520 and no, there every, there every packet is going to have some identification number as I said earlier there will be some identification number in as part of the IP header and this uh, on the other side no, there is uh, a MTU of 200. So, uh, clearly no uh, 180 plus 20, so 20 a header and 180 of data. So, you need to break up your 500 uh, uh, byte data into, uh, into the size of 200. Right. So, what I am saying is we are sending 520 bytes and the, and the receiver can only accept 200 bytes. Right. So, there is a need of fragmentation. So, where is fragmentation done? Fragmentation is done at the router level. So, therefore, 520 bytes would be converted to 200 bytes each. So, if you see the first packet, no 180 plus 20 that is 20 is the header and 180 is the data and at the bottom I have given the identification number as 100. So, identification number 100 will be common for all the packets. Uh, for the entire data right so if the 500 byte of data is there then this 500 byte of data would be broken up into various fragments so 500 is converted to 200 fragments or datagrams and uh, both uh, i mean both are present at the network layer and both have to go through the uh, data link layer frames and uh, it has to see whether the and the maximum transfer unit is uh, transmittable unit is uh, uh, available uh, of what size. So, based upon that 180 is the maximum size that you can uh, convert to plus 20 is 200 right and uh, likewise a uh, second packet of 200. So, uh, 180 plus 180 is 360, 360 plus uh, I mean 500 minus 360 what it comes up to is 140 remaining last uh, you know the packet could be of uh, different size right. Uh, so, these three uh, fragments can happily sit in the detailing layer and they can go uh, why? Because uh, data link layer is capable of uh, carrying frames of 200 bytes. Observe that you now here every fragment is uh, going to carry the header. Reason is it is datagram service. Every fragment or packet is sent independently. So, packet switching is, I told earlier also that every uh, packet you now will be having its own headers. Right? So, every fragment will be carrying, it, carrying its own header. So, all the three uh, fragments will be uh, received by the destination and uh, now the reassembly and the other things will be done by the uh, at the end only. So, let us see some of the questions for that. How will the destination identify that only this uh, uh, three are the fragments coming from as uh, three fragments are coming from the single datagram. For this now uh, in the second row of the IP header there is a field called identification. So, as 100, 100, 100 in the previous example I have written. So, through ID numbers, you know, all the fragments will be identified. So, to perform a reassembly, ID numbers will be used and it is a 16 bit field. It is not just enough to um, just uh, say that you no, know, this uh, uh, three fragments are having same IDs. Along with this, the receiver should also identify what is the sequence in which you no know, we should merge. So, reason is uh, it is not guaranteed that all of them are uh, going to follow the same path. It could be it could be received in order, it could be received out of order, both the possibilities know would be there. So, receiver should also know the order in which know we have to merge it. So, simply by sorting the information may even not work, right, because the data may not be available and then we are saying that no, we, uh, it should merge whatever the information is available, but the maybe the packet is not available and no even sorting also may not work even though the data is received out of order. So, for that no what we are going to use is we are going to use the field called uh, called as fragmentation offset field. So, second row uh, last field is uh, fragmentation offset field which is of 13 bit. Uh, it is a number which is used to identify the order right. So, uh, what will be uh, uh, done inside this is uh, let us say uh, ID is 100 100 100 right we are continuing with the same example ID is 100 100 100 and sequence numbers I am saying 0, 1, 2 and so on right. So, sequence number 0, 1, 2 uh, this is just an idea to tell you that no this is not anyway not going to work we are going to have something different and uh, uh, there is one more I mean there is a flag which is more fragment. So, when the first packet is moving this there is some more data which is uh, in the same ID is going to follow yes it is there. So, more fragment flag is set to 1 then 1 
and then the last one because that is the last uh, uh, fragment after which there is no data so it is set to 0. So, uh, this is uh, the, the concept of sequence number 0 starting from 0, 1, 2 and so on is actually not scalable. The reason is no here if you see there will be two fragments uh, no uh, in this example let us say MTU uh, the underlying the other MTU uh, from where the packet number second middle packet is moving is uh, having the size of 110. So, 90, 90, 90 plus 20 is 110, uh, 90 plus 20 is 110. In that way, the second packet is broken up into two uh, sub packets, right? And the ID remains the same, 100, 100. Offset, no, again starts from 0 and so on. So, this 0 and 1 and the previous 0 and 1 is uh, actually conflicting, right? So, that is why we, we can say that it is not scalable. But however, in the middle packet, no, the more fragment, more fragment will remain the same. So, MF is equal to 1, 1 because that is there is a, a data which is coming after that also uh, and that the first packet itself is not the last packet, right, the packet which is fragmented. So, we cannot put, uh, mm, yes, uh, in that way, no, uh, that is not scalable. Yes, another thing is that we cannot put the decimal point or a floating point uh, number in the fixed length field uh, accurately, 1.1, 1.0, no, that is a reason. The people may ask, uh, say that, no, why not you give the numbers 1.1, 1.0. 0, 1.2, 1.3 and so on and then again 1.1.0, 1 1.1.1, 1 1.1.2 and so on. The, it is difficult to put all these uh, decimal numbers, no, uh, I mean real numbers into uh, in a proper way. So, uh, sequence numbers uh, like 0, 1, 2, we are not going to follow and then uh, what is the next method in that case is uh, uh, we need to follow is uh, we will have something different, right. So, what we will do is we will have uh, we'll have uh, the uh, fragmentation offset field, which is going to uh, combine. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, we'll come to that. Uh, let us see this example. Uh, 180, uh, uh, 180, 20, 180, 20, 140, 20. ID is all 100. Offset is zero. And here I'm saying, see, instead of zero, one, two offset, zero, one, two. Uh, what I'm saying here is that why not you why do not you have that you know, the, the bytes which have already been uh, sent successfully you No, know, that number offset of offset to be used as that number. So, 180 then comes 360. So, 180 plus 180 is 360 uh, for the third pa uh, packet. So, in that way the offset numbers are not 0, 1, 2, but it is 0, 180, 360 and so on. And the MF is 110, header length field is 555, total length field is 200, 200, 160 and so on. If the second packet is uh, needs to now travel to the uh, through the MTU of uh, 110, in that case uh, again 90, uh, 20 that is uh, 110, uh, ID remains the same, offset is 180 and in the second packet, no, uh, this again 20 and 90. So, second packet would be what? So, uh, 180 plus 90 is 270. So, 270 would be the offset in that case. In this way, we have set this whole example and the four there will be four fragments in uh, uh, in total. Uh, the first first fragment, the second fragment is broken up into two more fragments and the last fragment, right. So, there are four fragments. Now, it is possible that no, the all the fragments uh, are available on the receiver side, but let us say 270 fragment, no, it could receive, it could be received in order or it could be received out of order also and 270 number packet no, there was some delay or maybe is not available in time resulting into what resulting into the data loss and uh, the assembly could not be successfully done or maybe the data would be ignored. So, you cannot directly even sort them and combine them because no there could be some packets which could be lost right. So, the fragmentation offset field why it is of 13 bit let us say total uh, uh, packet uh, size is 2 to the power 16 and uh, we are having the offset field is of, of 13. Uh, so, there is a difference of uh, uh, 3 bits which is nothing but 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8. So, what normally we do is we divide this uh, number by 8. So, and that is used as an offset, right. So, offset field is then of 13 bit. So, let us say 180 is the size, but it is, it is not the exact multiple of 8. So, what we do is we find the, the nearest multiple of 8, not greater than uh, uh, not going on the higher side, but on the lower side. So, 176 is the uh, right number, which is exact multiple of 8. So, the first offset anyway is going to be 0, but one seven, second offset if you see in the second packet, central packet uh, is 176 divided by 8 is uh, 22. So, this uh, offset number is 22. 
then we have sent 176 plus 176 two times right so 176 plus 176 divided by 8 is giving us 44 as the second offset so now it is actually uh, 13 bit field which is uh, exact multiple of 8 and then if you again try to do the uh, fragmentation uh, if if required it the, for the center packet then what is going to happen is that 88 plus 20 uh, so, uh, 100 uh, identification number, then 22 anywhere remains the first, but for the second one what happens is uh, 22 uh, plus 88 divided by 8, so that comes up to 33. So, in that way, no, the even though it was 110 uh, which was the MTU, but it was not the exact multiple of 8, so resulting into what resulting into, we are making use of the lower uh, value. Uh, which is exact multiple of 8, which is 108, the total length is 108, which is exact multiple of maybe, right. So, in that way, we are going to make use of it uh, in, the, the, in the power, in the multiple of 8. So, offset uh, uh, is, num is the number of data bytes ahead of the data fragment, uh, uh, but then no, it has to be multiple of 8, because in worst case, it uh, I might get the offset as big as 2 to the power 16, but I have also uh, only space to have 2 to the power 13. So, I am going to use the scaling factor of 8. So, worst case is now put up in front of you uh, 2 to the power 13. So, this could fit in the fragmentation offset and that is what we, we can say it is scaling that we have done. In the last fragment, uh, again see the last fragment need not be the multiple of 8. Right, so what the last fragment, whatever is the case, maybe just put it as it is and then let it pass through, right? And do not fragment uh, would be there. Maybe more fragments will be set to zero, right? So intermediate fragments uh, will always be multiple of it. Uh, understand? Intermediate fragments will always be multiple of it, but the last fragment did not be multiple of it. So 200 plus 50, maybe plus 20 is there. 500 plus 20 is there. So if it is broken up into four fragments. In that case, what will be happening is 500 is your data byte, but then 4 times the header, so that is overhead is uh, overhead is 60. Why? Because anyway, 1 times now if you are sending it, for that also 20 byte packet is going to be there. So, but then uh, with the help, uh, because of fragmentation, 3 more uh, packets are there. So, total 4 packets, if it is there, then then one six. I mean 3 times the header size, no, that is 20, 60 byte is the uh, total overhead in that case. So, in terms of efficiency, if you are interested to see, then uh, what is efficiency is useful bytes upon the total bytes. So, that is equal to what? That is 500 upon uh, five, uh, 500 plus 4 into 20. There is some mistake there. So, it is equal to 500 by 580. But so, bandwidth utilization of throughput is what? Bandwidth uh, is efficiency into the bandwidth. Given to you this example, let us say, uh, there is a network of 1 Mbps, network of 2 Mbps, network of 3 Mbps and they are connected uh, through routers in this way. Then what is the uh, uh, what is the bottleneck here? Bottleneck is basically the lowest speed which is 1 Mbps, right? So, uh, uh, we cannot transmit the data faster than 1 Mbps because the lower um, puts up this bottleneck, right? Uh, it is like bottle is there and you are putting a finger on the, uh, on the neck of it. Uh, on the opening side and then you open it, what is the data that will flow, uh, the maximum data that will flow is 1 MB, right, 1 megabytes. So, considering this, uh, what is the effective bandwidth utilization? Effective bandwidth utilization is band efficiency into the bandwidth, bandwidth is 1 Mbps, efficiency whatever is uh, you have uh, obtained. Right? From that you can calculate this. Also, uh, uh, given to this example, let us say, uh, mm, 0, 22, 33, 44, this is an example and uh, more fragments are following or not. So, last one is 0, so that is the header length field is 5, uh, total length is 196, 108, 108, 168, IDs are all 0. So, where is fragmentation done? Answer to this is routers and not at the source, right. Source does only does, does the segmentation. Uh, where are fragments reassembled? So, understand reassembly will always be taking place at the destination uh, and not at the intermediate router. There is no guarantee that the all because no, there is a reason. No, there is no guarantee that all the fragments will pass through the same router. Some of the uh, packets may flow from the top router, some may flow from the second router, middle router, and the third route, lower router, and so on. So, in that way, that is why no uh, reassembly is always done at the destination machine and not at the router level. So, why not router? Because it can follow different path. Right.
then uh, similarly you know there is one example here uh, there is no need that all of them follow the same path and because of that uh, this could be uh, there so here is a fragmentation example uh, uh, th there are uh, uh, this example is saying that you now the well, the total size whatever is there you now you have to divide by 8 and then the appropriate offsets will be uh, calculated so 0 divided by 8 is 0 then 1400 divided by 8 is 175 and 2800 divided by 8 give, is giving you 350 in that way you know, the fragmentation offset is calculated and you need to put up this fragmentation offset into this 13 bit field likewise uh, look at the second example which is uh, shown here uh, uh, your bytes are 00002399 and uh, the first uh, uh, data the, the initially it is all 000 is the first fragment in the second fragment uh, in the, as per the previous example 175 is the offset but then then it is then uh, no it needs some more fragmentation to be done depending upon the mtu requirement right and that uh, the 175 remains 175 for this uh, uh, when it is fragmented further and uh, the it is uh, having the first byte as uh, uh, something different which is then giving us the uh, uh, the offset as 275 and finally the 350 is remaining as it is right and do not fragment uh, and the more fragment is bit is set to zero in the if you see here more fragment bit is set to zero right so here there is more fragment which is set to one and here there is more fragment which is set to one so in this way if you see now uh, the last fragment will always have the uh, more fragment bit to zero uh, which indicates that it is the last fragment and just uh, the, the reassembly has to terminate i mean has to do the end operation after that okay and we'll submit it to the uh, higher layers right so with this the fragmentation is uh, uh, over you can uh, go through uh, the uh, uh, material uh, 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 more than one time uh, and maybe come up with your doubts. Thank you very much.